Next year, 2020, is the 10th anniversary of the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill, the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history and a human-caused disaster of very large scale. Human-caused uh, human disasters differ from their natural counterparts in a lot of ways. And when we think about them socially, one really important factor is the fact that there's a responsible party. Coastal communities in Louisiana experienced cascading social and economic effects in the years following the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill, and those effects continue to be studied. So what we know is that children experience disaster differently from adults. They're nested within a family system, and they rely on the adults in their life for safety, consistency, and support. All right? And when we think about human exposure to something like an oil spill, there's two main kinds. Okay? There's physical exposure to the oil spill or chemicals used to clean it up. And then there's indirect <laughs> exposure, so exposure to an affected person or an economic effect. What do these exposures and outcomes look like for children in the years following the spill? I'm going to talk you through some preliminary analysis of a long-term study of 464 parents living in spill-affected areas of southeast Louisiana. All right, so right off the bat, what we see here is that more parents reported that their household had experienced a spill-related economic loss, so that indirect exposure, than reported physical exposure for their child. I'm a social worker in addition to being a sociologist, and I'm interested in how these different types of exposure relate to child mental health outcomes. And in our survey, depressive symptoms were the most common mental health outcome rep reported for children. So how do we kind of dig into that information using quantitative survey data? What we can do is take a predictive model and put in our two exposure types along with a number of characteristics for children and family that may be really important in the face of disaster, okay? Things like race, income. And then we also want to consider healthcare context here, so the availability of healthcare resources in the community, because that can be important with mental health too. And what we can start to do when we put all these things together is predict the odds that a child would have a reported depressive symptom if they also had this characteristic. And what we see is that children who lived in a household that had a spill-related economic loss had 2.91 were 2.91 times more likely to have a reported depressive symptom than those who did not. And physical exposure was not significant here. So female children and older children were also more likely to have reported depressive symptoms, as were children in middle and lower income ranges. So what can we do with this information? This is an example of the type of analysis that can be done using social survey data to better understand how oil spills may affect health and household economies. When we understand the things that shield children and family and make them more vulnerable from oil spills, we can better prepare, prepare people in coastal communities to develop tools and share knowledge to prepare for and respond to events like the BPD water rise and oil spill. Thank you.